with the best game of the day, the most surprising game of the day early on Thanksgiving afternoon, the Green Bay Packers go into Detroit and upset the Detroit Lions 29 to 22. A thrilling game, an exciting game for the Packers and their young quarterback, Jordan Love. To get into it all, I am now joined by the guys who were calling the game as usual, Kevin Burkhardt, Greg Olson. What was your biggest takeaway from this shocking Green Bay upset of Detroit. Well, an impressive win for Green Bay here, stunning the first place Lions and really doing it in dominating fashion, both sides of the ball. But I think the number one thing that you have to ask, has Jordan Love officially arrived? Listen, I, I think so. I mean, we, we think back all the way to week one. We walked out of Soldier Field in Chicago and we said, listen, I think Green Bay is on to something. Of course, the expectations following back-to-back Hall of Famers are sky high. But the last four weeks... This is the guy they thought they drafted. This was the guy they came into the season thinking they had. And listen, there's no guarantees about anything in this league. But if he continues to play at this level, I don't see how that's even a debate anymore. No. And the Packers with this win, they're right in the mix for that final wild card spot. So it's going to be interesting as we go on. For the Lions, sloppy game for them. Didn't convert a fourth down. Turned the ball over multiple times. They've got to be better next time going forward. So the Packers, big win on Thanksgiving. Thanks again, guys. You know... No matter how hard we try, we often fall victim to the moment in football. You you only get 17 opportunities to make an impression. So these things tend to weigh heavily. When you have a great game, it's easy to assume you're the best team in the league. When you have a terrible game, it's easy to assume you're the worst and you're never going to get better. You, it's easy to forget that all of these teams are are living, breathing things. Hope they're they're full of people. Hopefully, they're evolving, they're changing, and hopefully, they're doing so in the right way. I say all of that to say that seems to be happening with the Green Bay Packers. And we actually have a comparison to benefit that case. To to prove my point, this is the second time Green Bay has played Detroit. If you remember all the way back to week four at Lambeau Field, these two teams didn't look like they belonged in the same league. The Lions outgained the Packers 284 yards to 23 in the first half. It was a boat racing. They jumped out to a 27-3 lead. And, yeah, Jordan Love and the Packers offense showed some signs of life in the late third, early fourth quarter. But it was a dominant win by Detroit. And it, it showed how far the Packers had to go to be in contention, even as a playoff team. This, this last month or so, this has looked like a team that was going nowhere pretty fast. In fact, it's, it's been a theme for the Packers season, I would say, Jordan Love, the wide receivers, the offensive production, it's been there at times. It's shown up in flashes, but it's either been too little too late, coming in rallies in the fourth quarter, or it's often just been not enough. Not the case on Thanksgiving, like Greg and KB alluded to. Go ahead and call it a coming out party for Jordan Love. Best game of his career, probably the biggest audience he's ever played in front of and and will be for this season, if I had to guess, unless the Packers finish this thing off and get to the style and finish this thing off in style and get to the playoffs to play that well in front of so many people while all of America's, you know, cooking dinner, sitting down to Thanksgiving lunch appetizer, whenever you eat your Thanksgiving meal. I always think that's interesting. Like some people are doing Thanksgiving during the early game. I'm more of an evening person, but that's up to you. The point is Jordan Love and this Packers offense balled and they did it from the jump. First play of the day goes for 53 yards to Christian Watson. On the opening drive, Jordan Love goes three for three for 71 and a touchdown pass. Absolutely threaded the needle to Jaden Reed on that touchdown pass. I think I'm stealing this from our buddy Mark Sanchez, NFL on Fox broadcaster. He said it was a pass you could have thrown through a car wash and it would have come out dry. Just an amazing throw and an amazing display overall by Jordan Love. Their highest point total since the season opening win against Chicago. And Love was the engine driving all of it. He completed 69% of his passes, which was very nice. 268 yards, three touchdowns, find seven different receivers. And the most impressive part for me, they weren't scheming these guys wide open. Like, sure, there were a lot of good looks, but a lot of these throws by Jordan Love required perfect placement in good coverage. Leading receivers, fitting throws into tight windows like he did on the touchdown to Jaden Reed. It was, it was just incredibly impressive. And just as a fan of football, as a guy who thinks Jordan loves a good player, it was cool to see him do it on this stage. 
if you've been paying attention to the Packers, you know that this didn't come out of nowhere. I think, like I said, we've been seeing signs of this for the better part of a month. The problem is it, it's coming in fourth quarters of games that are already out of reach, or it's it's coming in games where you're like, man, if we'd seen this in the second quarter, maybe we beat the Denver Broncos. And here it is coming together for the entirety of a game from the get-go. It's cool to see a team growing and building on its successes. The receivers are helping Jordan Love out. He's playing phenomenally. The protection was solid on Thursday. It's just cool to see a young team grow. That's what you want when you have the youngest team in the NFL. And the Packers did it in style on Thursday. The fun thing. Okay. We've seen all of that from the offense and we know that the offense is green. The fun thing is that they paired it with a really solid showing from their defense, which first of all, the defense is supposed to be the strength of this team. And we haven't always seen that even despite all of the draft picks. We've been over that a million times, seven first round draft picks on their roster. The box score is, is the box score is going to say that the Lions put up a ton of yards, and that's why box score watching isn't always useful. For starters, one of the stories of this game is that the Packers held the Lions to one of five on fourth down. We know how aggressive Dan Campbell is. We talked about it. It's been the key to some big Lions successes. It's been their calling card. The Packers didn't allow them to convert a fourth down until their final drive, and the game was mathematically alive. But you had a pretty good feeling of where it was going to go by the time that finally happened. Four of their five attempts came in scoring position. They had the one fake punt in their own territory that Dan Campbell says he'd like to have back. But the other ones were all, you know, around the Packers 30 or closer. So these are all opportunities to at least kick a field goal or you feel good about your odds to get a touchdown if you convert. And the Packers snuffed all of them out. It's a big storyline in this game. For my money, none was bigger than the fourth and seven from the Packers 31 early fourth quarter. The Lions convert and score a touchdown. They're within one score with a lot of time to play. Could have changed the entire game. Instead, Rashawn Gary whips around Taylor Decker at left tackle, strip sacks Jared Goff, and that's all she wrote. Never really felt like it was going to be a close ball game or, or, or a Lions comeback after that. Speaking of Rashawn Gary, three sacks on the day. Hell of a performance from the guy the Packers just paid say they feel pretty damn good about their decision to use him as one of their building blocks on defense moving forward. He forced a fumble, like I just said, in addition to the three sacks and the big play by the defense. Packers also recovered a fumble for a defensive touchdown. Shout out to Jonathan Owens. Poor guy. Can't get identified as anything other than Simone Biles' husband. He had a baller day, 12 tackles. Had a huge TFL on Jameer Gibbs in this game, and he was the scoop and score on the defensive touchdown that really put Green Bay up, up early in this game. You heard KB and Greg say it. Packers are in the middle of the wild card hunt. They look like a team that's gaining confidence. They also look like a team that might gain some big time players back. Jair Alexander has been hurt for a solid chunk of this season. Devondre Campbell inactive on Thursday. Aaron Jones dealing with an injury. You would expect all of those guys to be back at some point during this stretch run. And that's really, really exciting if you're a Packers fan. You're a game behind the Minnesota Vikings for that final wild card spot. They do have the Kansas City Chiefs coming up next. But after that, the schedule really, really opens up. Not a stretch to think that this team could make a run at the postseason. And if they keep playing like they did on Thursday, I'm all for it. This is a very fun team to watch. Over on the other side, big picture. In the big, big picture, not something I'm super worried about for the Lions just because they've done such a good job of stacking wins. They comfortably lead the division. Not a ton of heavyweights left on the schedule. They do have to play Dallas, but that's not for a month. Uh, I think you feel pretty solid about what's in front of Detroit moving forward. They've got the Saints coming up. They've got another game against the Bears, the Broncos, two games against the Vikings. Yes, some some good teams on that list, but I mean, if if we're supposed to take the Lions seriously as a division contender and maybe even a team that could get the bye, although that seems pretty unlikely right now, those are all games you expect the Lions to be able to compete and win. Big picture, not so big of a problem. Right now, right in this moment, if you're a Lions fan, I understand it. You've got to be really worried about this Detroit defense. Giving up an average of 360 yards over the last five weeks 
They're near the bottom of the league in all the metrics. I mean, especially, like I said, over the last, really since the loss to Baltimore, had a lot of injuries on the defensive side of the ball. I would say Aaron Glenn and his coaching staff, I get it, you're depleted, but so is everybody else around this time of year, not adapting to it quite as well as you'd probably prefer. Their only solid performance in this five or six week stretch is when they beat up on Las Vegas. And that was the night before Mark Davis fired his coaching staff and benched his starting quarterback. So not a win that I think anybody's going to hang their hat on. They've got to find a way to get their pass rush going, to get stops. You're not going to win a whole lot of games giving up 27, 28 points per game, which is what they're at here over the last five or six weeks. Jared Goff is a big part of it too. Got to rediscover some ball security. I thought he was better on Thursday than he was against Chicago on Sunday, but still two, two big, or excuse me, three big turnovers, one of which leads to a defensive touchdown. That's six turnovers in the last calendar week. I, I, you're not going to win a whole lot of football games playing that way. It's, it's unfair. Like we just said, cool for Jordan love that he had his best moment in a game that everyone watched sucks for Jared Goff that he's been on the short list of the best quarterbacks in the NFL all season long. And all of America tuned in on Thursday and said, I thought Jared Goff was better than this. He is. I promise you he is, but not over these last two games, six turnovers in two games, Lions needed a miracle to win the first one. They lose this second one fairly comfortably. And if they don't change that, I mean, the defense is worth worrying about, but clearly this Detroit offense can score points and win you games, even if your defense isn't good. They did it against the Chargers. They've done it several times this season. It ain't going to work if you're turning the ball over like this. Lions get some time to sit and chew on it. Road game to New Orleans coming up next. Like I said, I mean, look, the next three games, Saints, Bears, Broncos. Not saying that's easy, but I have seen enough from the Lions so far this season to think they can right the ship and win two or preferably three of those games. I think that's a doable goal. Starts with ball security. Maybe take a weekend off and get healthy. I'm not panicking about the Lions yet, but this this last week definitely makes you rethink where they stand in the NFL hierarchy, especially when you see a performance like what Dallas and what San Francisco did on Thanksgiving as well. We will get to that in a minute. But for, for that, for this, for the early game, what a performance from Jordan Love. What a breakout game for the Green Bay Packers.